I am Dr. Mike Eric Martin, and today I would like to talk about the impact of childhood behaviors and trauma. Trauma is an event in a person's life that is difficult to handle, and it leads them to struggle with unmanageable emotions by impacting their daily routine. Trauma-informed care refers to a system that uses its understanding of the role of violence in the lives of people to design service systems that accommodate the vulnerability of trauma survivors. There are signs of trauma that parents can look out for. Signs of trauma comes in the form of increased heart rate, shaking, dizziness, or faintingness, rapid breathing, and loss of control of bowel and bladder, just to name a few. There are multiple types of trauma. Acute trauma, which is a single event that lasts for a limited period of time. An example is natural disasters, car accident, love loss, physical or sexual assault. Chronic trauma is an experiencing many traumatic events, often over a long period of time. For example, witnessing domestic violence, physical or sexual assault. Complex trauma occurs when trauma has been exploited to a child at an early age, younger than five years old. An example is neglect or negligence. It is about survival and safety for a child. These trauma events can convince a child that the world is not safe. Children will experience uh, stages of grief while having different styles of trauma. In those stages, they may experience shock and denial, anger, bargaining, despair, depression, and understanding. Parents need to remember your child may behave in a manner of emotional outbursts, regression of behaviors, withdrawn, aggressions, and or attention seeking. These are just signs that you may witness when your child is going through some form of trauma and they are trying to deal with the unmanageable emotions. Let's look at moving towards healing. The healing process incorporates parents will take the responsibility for a child's behavior first instead of allowing the child to take the responsibility. This means that you understand them and you do not blame them. You are observing the behavior and not the reacting and not reacting. What are the child's needs? You need to get down on the child's level. A little understanding will help you cope and deal with the behavior and not the child. So in essence, what are you trying to say as a therapist or as a counselor will tell you that the child may be behaving in a manner that you think is inappropriate instead of you yelling and screaming or putting the child on punishment, you're gonna take a moment and you're gonna get down on that child's level and 
look at the situation and figure out what it is that's going on. We will learn more about how we can go about doing that. Trauma behaviors. So behavior is everything that a person does through their action, feelings, and thoughts. It is the immediate and past results of an individual personal experience. Signs of behavior or trauma in children can come from fear, not smiling and laughing. They are withdrawn. They have a loss of appetite, excessive crying, moodiness, restlessness, and are self-harming behaviors. Let's help cope with trauma behavior. Here are some things that a parent should consider when helping a child cope with trauma behavior. Consider the child development capacity. Children act and behave appropriately and inappropriate at different stages in their growth. So what you have to consider or think about is the behavior that I see age appropriate. Also, you have to consider the mental capacity of that child. The environment can play an impact on child's behavior significantly. This is what we mean about getting on the child's level. Parents need to see from the point of view, and it can be a simple fix. Take a moment to observe your surroundings and think about what you can change. For example, noise level. Check out the lighting in the room. Diet impacts the child's behavior and the space that resides in if it is overcrowded. So if the TV is up really loud or there's a lot of screaming and a lot of loud noises, people talking really loud, this can be troubling for children who are suffering through some form of trauma or have behavior issues. So what you want to do is you want to eliminate the noise to help them be able to deal with what's going on. Lighting. Some rooms can be very dark. Children may be afraid of the dark. They may have some issue with the dark. There is a number of things that happen in the dark that can be a trigger for a child's behavior. Lighting. For me, I love lighting, so I love to open my curtains and bring in all the light. It fills my soul. So if the room is dark, you may want to cut on lighting. And if it's too bright, you may want to dim it a little bit. It just all depends on that child. Diet is very important. If a child is not eating appropriate diet, this can also have a effect on child, children behavior, especially those who are suffering from some type of trauma. What about overcrowdedness? People don't think about if the room is overcrowded with so much stuff that that is nothing, but it's a big deal when you're a child. And so sometimes eliminating a lot of things, a lot of things that's overstimulating can help a child a great deal. When children are expect, uh, experiencing trauma, they will find it hard to follow rules. They are in a period of being detached or disassociated from their own emotions and become overwhelmed while struggling with the changes in their life. So there may be a number of things that's going on in their life, a change in a new school, a move into a new house, or a move into a new neighborhood. They may be missing a, another parent. They may be missing a sibling. They may be having struggles at school. 
it can be a lot of things that may take a child a period of time to get adjusted and so how they can handle those changes is they detach from their feelings and then things become very overwhelming for them unmet emotion need emotional needs parents in their busy days of busy lives may fall short of meeting these needs so validate their feelings and find out what is missing that is not to say that what is wrong with you that is not that type of thing there are appropriate questions that you can ask that will help you along the way and we will talk about that further along continue on parents need to start with empathy when addressing their children who are experiencing trauma what is empathy empathy is the ability to sense other people's emotions with the ability to place yourself on a imagine or imagine what someone else might be thinking or feeling in that moment parents need to know what are their expectations for them and are they realistic something that parents may not think is that the things that you may have for your children to do or want them to do or want them to achieve may be more than they can handle and that goes back to their mental capacity and so the expectation may be great from your standpoint but it may be a different for a child of whatever age children means well but remember they are struggling to cope and manage unmanageable experiences let's look at prohibited methods of behavior management this is parents reframing from corporal punishment verbal attacks and withholding personal items this does not solve any problems for the most part it exaggerates the problems let's look at acceptable methods of behavior management these are loss of privileges re redirecting the child's activities listening to the child ask questions reward appropriate behavior and praise the desired behaviors the more you do uh, you pray the desired behaviors that you want the better the results that you will receive listen to your child your child will tell you what is going on redirect your child in a tone that is pleasant ask your child these questions when they're in a trauma outburst or they're having some emotional problems that they're dealing with how can i help and or what are your needs your child will be able to express their needs when it is brought to their attention in an appropriate manner this is something that I like for parents to consider. Stop. Stop is stop, think, observe, and pray. Do not act on impulse. Take a moment and breathe. Consider impact and building communication and trust. Can I change something right now that will make a difference? Prayer never hurts anyone. Earlier we mentioned, or I mentioned, that can you change some things that right now 
that would make a difference. And we talk about the noise level, overcrowdedness, lighting, or for an example. And also think about what are you feeding your child that may be also contributing to unmanageable emotions. This is something for parents, self-care. Self-care, parents need to be mentally and physically open and ready to help their child cope with different issues. Ensure that you are incorporating things in your life that are healing and positive for yourself before you have the skills to help the vulnerable loved ones in your life. Take a walk, meditate, pray, take a long bath or shower, call a friend, and seek therapy when needed. It is okay to reach out to professionals who are trained in childhood behavior trauma. There are resources to help. Call your local child welfare or Department of Children's Family Services and ask them, can they direct you to someone who can help you? In conclusion, trauma can be emotional, mental, and or physical. Trauma can last for a short time or be reoccurring. There is help by listening to the sign. There are small things you can do at home, like turn down lights or off any loud noises, dim lighting, brighten the room if it is dark, and ask the right question. How can I help or what are your needs? Remember, the child is struggling with unmanageable emotion. Seek professional help in the form of a licensed mental health counselor or therapist.